Um, I'm using a eyepiece that I had for a while, probably the for one of the first eyepieces I ever had. It came with a telescope, actually. And uh, I never used it, and now I'm discovering what a good telescope. First of all, it has a big, what a good eyepiece it is. It has a big eye, uh, eye lens. Um, then it's called Celestron 30 millimeter Ultima series series, fully multi coated. I was comparing the image with this what uh, I have as a star guider ED 18 millimeter. That's a 30, of course. But I noticed that this uh, ED just 40% uh, out of the center. For the rest of the 60%, it has really seagull shaped stars. But this one is almost flat everywhere in the field. Only at the 5% near the edge, you will notice that the stars are not pinpoint anymore. Really good, really good quality. I'm surprised that such a good eyepiece I had. I never used it. So. It's one of those eyepieces that during the Halloween, they call it... Uh, uh, Halloween eyepiece because it has uh, orange and uh, black. That's Halloween, the color of Halloween. Orange is the color of the pumpkin, and uh, black is the you no know, night of the Halloween, I suppose. So, uh, really amazing, good quality eyepiece. And actually, the field of view of this is not much different to the field of view of a 40 millimeter eyepiece. Uh, Practically, it is the most maximum true field of view that you can achieve with a one and a quarter eyepiece size eyepiece, barrel size eyepiece. So, really good, really pleasing. I'm using the Bushnell uh, family scope, really easy, like a Stros AstroScan is a clone of it. And I'm looking through the window, <laughs> that's amazing. This window is not particularly clean, it has condensation somehow here. But I'm looking with a filter, a bother filter through the Andromeda Galaxy. Beautiful, uh, sorry, through the M42 Nebula. It's beautiful. The quality of the image is really amazing. Very good. Very good. I'm really pleased. Without the bother, also it was good, but I just had the filter, I just use it. Builder, father, uh, sorry, bother, uh, I think it's a light pollution, S, something like that, filter. Really good, I bought it cheap. And I'm just sitting here, just in front of me, I was able to turn the telescope toward my face. Really easy, comfortable, I can sleep over this. The other night I slept over the eyepiece. I was watching the really looking at the M42 with the Skywatch Nirvana eyepiece, 82 degrees. This is, I don't know, I think it's around 70 degrees. This one really easy. I was observing it, and my eyes really get dark adapted after a while. It was because I'm indoors and I'm observing indoors. Beautiful with, with that filter, completely eliminates the, the effect of the light pollution where we live and uh, and towns that is around us all over especially london which is in the horizon is always bright uh, it okay. was uh, we were able to actually see the yeah i was looking at the many stars i almost saw the horse head nebula from <laughs> it's hard to believe flame nebula and the horse head nebula and sigma orionis i thought i saw several nebulosity uh, which dark patches against the background but anyway well, i may be wrong but indoors, I could see it. It's impossible, but I could see. After a while, it was so warm and cozy, I was holding this in my arm. I was looking at the thing. I slept over the eyepiece. It's like a pillow, like a Japanese pillow. <laughs> I slept with this. The sky background is so dark with this eyepiece and with the bother light pollution filter. So dark. Black. Peach black.
Yeah, that's a rhino gamma, the bright patch in the middle. It's a magnetic anomaly. It's interestingly symmetrical in most parts of it. But uh, there is a tail of it, like a handle of a pan, which goes upward, or a golf handle. Golf club handle. As you can see the cloud layer, thin cloud layer, passing over it makes it difficult to focus. The yeah, render now is on to the right. And that coffee bean feature that has no name and I believe it's volcanic in origin. Kind of uh, fountain of lava in the passes there. And also some graben you can see in the middle of it. There is a hollow area that's two fault, parallel faults. The middle part of it has fallen and it's called graben. Interesting for a geological study and a structural geology. I try to focus on that feature that I'm the coffee bean feature I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what is now at the center. 